chapter two, we're going to discuss trigonometric functions, and there are several different ways to look at trigonometric functions. The first way we're going to look at them is trigonometric functions of acute angles. And in the geometry class, and um, we talk about this as right triangle trigonometry, and that's about all the farther we get in geometry class, so some of this information is going to be new to you. So first thing I want to talk about are the six trigonometric functions. Um, in each of our trig functions, take an angle and give us some sort of number. So the first trig function is sine of an angle. Then we have cosine of an angle, tangent. cosecant, secant, and cotangent. These are typically abbreviated with, the, um, with three letters. So sine is S-I-N, cosine is C-O-S, tangent is T-A-N. Cosecant is C-S-C, -S -C. secant is S-E-C, and cotangent is C-O-T. And later on, we'll talk about some of the relationships between each of these. But for now, we're just going to come up directly what the definitions of each of these trig functions are. And they're all based off of a right triangle. So for a right triangle, um, and again, we're talking about a specific angle. I could have labeled the angle up top or down at the bottom. But first thing you need to always do when you're doing right triangle trig is figure out which angle you're talking about. And I have my geometry class circle it, so we know which one it is. And then we label our triangle by sides. First side we label is the hypotenuse, which is the side opposite the right angle. Then the side opposite the angle of interest is called the opposite side. And the last side is the adjacent side. The reason why I have you label the hypotenuse first is because both of these pieces are adjacent to the angle of interest, but there is only one hypotenuse, and that is the side opposite the right angle in a right triangle. I'm going to abbreviate these. Opposite is OPP, adjacent as ADJ, and hypotenuse is HYP. And using those, we're going to come up with ratios that give us the value of the various trig functions for given angles. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay? Um, in your notes, it says do SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. But I have found um, that there's another um, mnemonic that you can use. And these are the three buttons on your calculator for trig functions in the order that they're listed, sine, cosine, and tangent. And then students typically remember, oh heck, another hour. of algebra. And what this does is the first letter of each of these words gives us the ratios for the particular functions. O over H is sine, A over H is cosine, and O over A is tangent. You do need to memorize these. These will be, if you're in college algebra on your benchmark test, I will guarantee you will see these on multiple tests during this semester, or if you're in Algebra 2, you'll guarantee to see this on your semester final, as well as probably one to two tests while we're covering trig. Now for the other three trig functions, if you remember the order, cosecant goes with sine, secant goes with cosine, and cotangent goes with tangent, all you do is take the reciprocals of these, okay? So, but this is the definition, cosecant is hypotenuse, over opposite, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, 
and cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Okay, all of that stuff is already written in your notes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do example 2.1, which gives us a triangle with side lengths three, four, and five, and it wants us to find the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of angle theta. So first thing I'm gonna do is, the way I always do these, circle the angle I'm talking about, label my sides, and then use my ratios. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent is adjacent over opposite. <coughs> Please note that these two trig functions, sine and cosine, they're a side length over the hypotenuse length. And we know the side lengths of a right triangle have to be smaller than the hypotenuse length. So these numbers right here have to be less than one. Okay, if I'm doing right triangle trigonometry. These numbers have to be less than one if I'm doing right triangle trigonometry. Okay? So if you turn your page, the next one we have is um, example 2.2. Um, they only did a couple of them in the example, but I'm going to do all of these, and we're going to show you why trig functions work. Okay? So again, circle the angle, label the sides, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent, and then do the ratios. Opposite over hypotenuse, 6 tenths is 3 fifths. Adjacent over hypotenuse, 8 tenths is 4 fifths. Opposite over adjacent, 6 eighths is 3 fourths. Please note that this triangle here, the 6, 8, 10, is similar to the triangle 3, 4, 5. The reason why I know that is because the corresponding parts are all proportional to each other. Okay, That's something that um, if you're in Algebra 2 and taking geometry at the same time, you'll probably be learning along at the exact same time that we're learning this or shortly thereafter. But if corresponding parts are proportional, the corresponding side lengths are proportional, then the two triangles are similar. Okay, notice if I take three times two, I get six. Five times two is 10. Four times two is eight. So those are similar triangles, which means they have the same shape, but not the same size. And my trig ratios are identical for similar triangles. Okay, so I can just transfer these over. Five thirds, five fourths, and four thirds. So that's where trigonometry comes in for us is if I'm using similar triangles, I'm gonna get the exact same results, okay? And remember, it's just a ratio of side lengths, okay? Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. So trig is just ratios of side lengths in triangles using these definitions. Because we have two special triangles that we deal with on a regular basis, it's a good idea to know what those ratios are without having to actually sit out and calculate them. If you're in college algebra, these are some of the ones that you are required to memorize. If you're in algebra two or geometry, um, you are gonna have to have them memorized by the end of the semester, but college algebra, I expect them to have it memorized earlier. So if I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, Okay, side lengths of one, okay? We know if both of these angles are the same, then both of the legs have to be the same. That's something you learned in geometry or should have learned. Well, the hypotenuse in this is gonna be the square root of one squared plus one squared. One squared plus one squared is the square root of two. So one way to memorize this is gonna be one, one, square root of two. 
Now, what I want to do is I want to normalize this so the hypotenuse is 1. And you're going to see why when we get into our next section. So I'm going to divide everything here by the square root of 2. So square root of 2 divided by square root of 2 is 1. 1 divided by square root of 2 is 1 over root 2. Um, this, you can see this in some books for some answers. I like to rationalize the denominator, which is going to give me the square root of 2 over 2. And this side length's the same, so it'll also be the square root of 2 over 2. So the reason why this is 1, if you think about sine of an angle, okay, sine of pi fourths, which is 45 degrees, is opposite over hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse is 1, that normalizes things so that you can just read the sine by looking at this vertical component, square root of 2 over 2. If you start thinking about it this way now, it'll be a lot easier when we start talking about other trigonometric definitions. The other triangle that we have um, that we deal with on a regular basis is a 30-60-90 triangle. If we want to think about the construction of it, if I have a 60-60-60 triangle, all three side lengths are the same. Well, if this side length is 1, that means that this piece is 1 half. Okay. And if I want to figure out what this length is, it's the square root of 1 squared minus 1 half squared. Okay? So that's 2 over 2. So 1 squared is 1. So that's 2 over 2. 2 over 2 minus... Um, 1 over 2, so let's write that down, square root of 2 over 2 minus 1 over 2 is equal, actually 1 fourth, sorry, so I need to do 4 over 4, is equal to the square root of 3 over 4, which is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. This one's already normalized for 1 being the hypotenuse. So the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, because that's its opposite. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Okay? These pi fourths to 45 degrees, pi six to 30, and pi thirds to 60, Again, those should become recognition for you. That was covered in chapter one, how to convert between degrees and radians. So these two triangles and their relationships, as well as the angle conversions for those two triangles, should become second nature for you. Okay? Using these two triangles, we're going to come up with the answers, for example, 2.3. So example 2.3 says the sine of 60 degrees, okay, 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, which is the square root of 3 over 2. Next one is the tangent of pi thirds, okay, pi thirds, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Notice they have the same denominator, so they're just going to cancel, so it's just going to be the square root of 3. Cosine of pi fourths. Pi fourths. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's square root of 2 over 2. And the secant of pi 6. Okay, the way I think about this one, secant of pi 6 is 1 over the cosine of pi 6. So let's think about what the cosine of pi 6 is. There's pi 6, so it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine is square root of 3 over 2, so secant is going to be 2 over root 3. And again, we normalize those. It's going to give me 2 square root of 3 over 3. 
Now, if you type in two over root three into your calculator, it's going to give you the two root three over three, okay? <coughs> Anytime that you have roots in the denominator, we wanna get rid of those roots in the denominator unless we're immediately going to do something that's gonna um, make that point mute, okay? So where do these come into play is it comes into play for things like example 2.4. Again, my triangle may not look exactly like the one in the drawing, but if I label it correctly, um, I will be able to figure the things out. Pi thirds, that's a 60 degree angle. So if I just draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I put my memorized side links in, Okay, and my memorized side lengths are, um, the way I do it is short side is one, hypotenuse is two, and that's the square root of three, okay? Again, if I multiply everything here by two, I'm gonna unnormalize it and not necessarily get my trig values. So I use the normalized one if I wanna find trig values. I multiply everything by two, and I get one, two, square root of three for the ratio, the properties of this. So if the bottom one is five, and that's a one, well, to go from one to two, I multiply by two, so this is gonna equal 10. And then this B, I take one times the square root of three, so it's just gonna be five root three. That's how easy it is if you know 30, 60, 90 triangles, okay? Same thing with the 45, 45, 90 triangles. Um, when you get the standardized tests, these are ones that they expect you to have memorized and they typically choose some of these special triangles on standardized tests because it makes your work a lot easier, okay? That's going to take us into example 2.5 you know, a typical story type problem, okay? We're gonna erase these so that when we do the problem, we'll redraw them if necessary. It says a 15 foot ladder is leaned against a wall. So that it makes a 60 degree angle with the floor. Use trigonometric function to determine how high up the wall the ladder reaches. So I'm going to call this y. And I want to know what y is. Okay? So I'm going to just draw my 30, 60, 90 triangle. Label my sides. If this is 60, 30, I'm going to go 1, 2, square root of 3. Okay, I want to know what y is. So what the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go from 2 to 1 by dividing by 2. And I'm going to go from the 1 to the root 3 by multiplying by the square root of 3. So this is going to be 15 over 2 times the square root of 3. No other work required here. Draw your triangles so you know what the relationships are and figure out what you have to do to get from piece to piece. Divide by 2 and then multiply by the root 3 to get there. Okay. Again, my recommendation is any time that you have a story problem is that you draw the picture, okay? But for 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90, I need you to come up with exact answers, and those are gonna be things that may have radicals in them. If it's any other angle, um, you're gonna use your calculator Make sure you are in the applicable mode. If they give you radians, you're in radians mode. If they give you degrees, you are in the degrees mode. Um, and that's how you're gonna use them to solve. So what I'm going to do is do example 2.6. They give me a triangle, which they've labeled this angle is 41 degrees. This is B. This is 63, and this is A. And I want to know what A and B are. 
So again, anytime I'm doing right triangle trigonometry, except for my memorized triangles, I circle the angle of interest. I label my sides. And then I write down a trig function that relates one of my knowns with one of my unknowns. So I know that opposite over hypotenuse equals the sine of this angle. B over 63. Well, if I want to solve for B, I multiply both sides by 63. Okay, and that is an exact answer. And if you're in degrees mode in your calculator and you type in 63 times the sine of 41, you're going to get approximately 41.33. Again, make sure you give me the approximate symbols. Do not give me equal signs there because once you stick that into the calculator, you're giving me a rounded number. Okay, now let's look for A. Well, I know that adjacent over well, I know that adjacent over hypotenuse is the cosine of that angle. <coughs> so cosine of 41 degrees is equal to A over 63. Multiply both sides by 63. Put that in the calculator, 63 cosine of 41. You get approximately 47.55, whatever that unit of measurement happens to be. Okay, so that worked through example 2.6, so you can see where those numbers came from. Okay, last one we have is example 2.7. And here's where power of trigonometry starts to be shown. Indirect measurements, 2.7. It says, when the sun is 50 degrees above the horizon. So I got the sun right here. We're gonna call this 50 degrees. A tree cast a shadow That is 20 feet long. Use a trig function and your calculator to estimate the height of the tree. So I want this distance right here, let's call it h. Well, what trig function relates, well, let's circle the angle, label the side, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. Which trig function relates opposite and adjacent? Well, that's tangent. So tangent of 50 degrees, is equal to opposite over adjacent. Multiply both sides by 20 feet. And put that in the calculator and it will tell us our tree, um, 20 tangent 51, no 50, 20, tan 50, approximately 23.84 feet tall. So we can use trigonometry to make indirect measurements, okay, and this is one way that it's typically used is to measure heights of things or distances. So if I knew what the height of something was, I could use that to find the distance. Um, that's typically ways that we're going to start using trigon trigonometry for basic things. And that pretty much covers everything in section 2.1 for our right triangle trigonometry. Um, my recommendation is that you do the practice problems in addition to the homework. That way you have the answers immediately for the practice problems so that you make sure that you are doing these things correctly.